The face of the universe, that's what we have been labeling her since her comeback here in Miss Universe Philippines. I can't believe that she is back in the pageant scene for, the, for another shot for the crown this time around. I can't believe that we are seeing her once again. So here she is. I'm so excited to do this interview. Please say hello to Miss Universe Philippines 2024 contestant from Cebu City, Miss Chris Stephanie Jansen. Hi, hi. Hello, grabe. Hi, Ang ganda, ganda mo pa rin. All Thank these so years. I actually wouldn't think na, ano, parang... We would have another interview, me as a candidate again. Uh oh. So I kind of put it back, shoved it under the the rug. Mm -hmm. But I think you know the universe has other plans. So I'm so happy that we're here again. Yeah. So thank you, thank you thank for this you. opportunity. So since si sinabi mo na nga, you can't believe that we're having this conversation mm -hmm. again as a candidate. How how has it been for you to humble yourself down again as a candidate, knowing that? Of course, we all know you as Chris Tiffany Hanson, who already competed internationally mm -hmm. and brought so much pride and honor to our I country. I always tell people um, if they ask me um, how or what has been the most humbling experience, lagi kong sinasabi that um, having to join Miss Universe Philippine Cebu is one of the most humbling experience, considering this is a really good story, no? Um, some of the girls that were competing, I actually trained them. Some of the girls, I hosted their pageants. So um, it's, a, it's a nice experience, but what I love about it is that I get to also share to them my experience when I joined my national pageant, when I joined my international pageant, because that was one of the most beautiful stories I can share to them. Having someone I consider as a mentor or as an ate looking out for me. And I think that's how we should be talaga as women in the pageant industry or as women in general. We should always be the ates of each other. So all this time while you were hosting those corporate mm. events, pageants, mentoring them, yeah. at the back of my mind, of course back then, uh, you already thought that your pageant career is over because of the age limit. Yeah. So, pero you were still, you know, at the back of your mind, you know, dreaming mm -hmm. of getting another sh shot for the crown. Well, the universe has always been in my heart. And when they finally abolished the age limit, I said it was a sign somehow, and I did get um, some, parang I did get some advice from people na it, this would have been the perfect time also for me to join because we don't know what's gonna happen next year. Mm -hmm. They might change again the rules next year or, you know, things might happen. So, ka na. <laughs> I didn't even know. I just joined because they did abolish the age limit and um, I set a goal for myself. That... I have another vision for myself for the 35-year-old Chris. Um, probably is... travel the world, focus more on business, focus more on uh, establishing a career on the business world or the corporate world. Uh, I did set a different goal for the 35-year-old Chris. Naman. So wait, so can you take us back to that moment <laughs> when you found out that Miss Universe has already the age limit rule? So nagtatatalon ka sa kinaupuan mo nung mga panahon na yon. Um, I kept it to myself. Laging sinasabi ng friends ko na parang, ang galing mo mag, ano, magta magtago oh, ng emotion. Oo, oh, oh, kasi, kasi <laughs> natatandaan ko, nung nag-post nag ka about it, nagulat kami. So all this time, <laughs> ano, wala kang kaingay-ingay, wala kang pahint-hint, diba? Katulad ng okay. ibang beauty queens. Uh -oh. Parang ikaw, sinock and omo na lang kami bigla sa post mo sa Instagram na all this time, we were still dreaming. <laughs> Pero ano eh, more. parang I'm... A lot of people thought it was like a spur of the moment decision. Because I didn't give any hints about it. I didn't even talk about it. And then I just posted that, uh, that message on my Instagram. But I'm a very calculative person. I think about the pros and cons. I think about what might happen to me if I take this in the long run, what's going to happen in the next three years for me. Um, I really thought about it very well. 
And but I said to myself that this could be, you know, a signal for the Filipina women, especially in their 30s or even later, na, you know, we shouldn't limit ourselves because we're in our 30s or in our 40s just because society tells us we should live a certain way because of our age. That's true. Mm-mm. So with your experience so far, nakakaya nakaka talagang nakikita ako talaga nakikipagsabayan ka talaga <laughs> sa mga kapwa kandidata mo. Mm-hmm. Um uh, I did jokingly tell uh, one of the members of Empire Studio. Sabi niya, "Oh, how does it feel? Parang everybody is asking about you. They're asking for a photo with you, oh. an interview, ganyan." So Anong feeling mo ngayon? Sabi ko, mm, aside from the back pain and joint pains, <laughs> aside from I know um, the muscle pains that I feel that I did not have when I was younger, um, I'm very excited and I'm very happy that a lot of people still do see my potential and appreciate my potential also. How difficult or easy was it for you to to be to be in this? beauty queen element again, considering, you know, the gap or the difference is 10 years. Mm-hmm. 2014 was your pageant, yes, ba? And exactly ngayon, exactly 10 years. At the, exactly a decade. So, ano ba, mas nangakaba, nangapa ka ba, nangalawang ka ba, o mas naging, ano ka pa, mas naging 2.0 ang labas mo sa pageant na to? Uh, medyo mahirap. Um, kasi nangalawang, that, that was the, when you said it, that was a perfect term. Kasi 10 years. And I haven't walked the stage that way mm-hmm. since the last time I joined the pageant. But I think with maturity comes with determination and um, your hard work. It really paid off. Um, I'm also working with people I trust so much and people who have the same vision as me. So, um, kahit marami ng sugat <laughs> yung pa ako kahit marami ng sugat yung pa ako and all the muscle pains it's I feel that it's worth it I'm here because I'm here with a purpose I'm here because I do want to send a message to all the women out there hindi lang yung mga women in their 30s kasi it's also parang kind of intimidating for a lot of women out there na oh I feel too young for this oh I feel too old for this we set a certain standard in society that somehow limits us but this should be a signal to people out there na kaya naman natin um, we shouldn't allow people's limitation to limit us but mm-hmm. we should push our capabilities talaga for us to um, make our dreams come true is that how we should view how women should join Miss Universe pageant as more like you know more like a uh, a wealth of experiences coming from uh, older, mature, career-oriented, mm-hmm. much seasoned, well-accomplished women like you. Because, diba, let's face it, back in the day, we always equate Miss Universe with youth. Mm-hmm. I mean, the younger you are, the better your chances of winning. And so, so, and so to speak. So, do you think, you know, in a way, do you think? This trajectory of Miss Universe going for going to a new direction in terms of changing their beauty standard is is benefiting them for the long haul or mm. not. Um, I'm very blessed that now I belong to an inclusive era where we accept women and we appreciate women in different stages of their lives because. Um, I'm very blessed that the organization also somehow evolved where mm-hmm. they see the value of a woman um, based on her capabilities. I've always said that an organization works with who they want to work with and who they seem can represent them well. It has to go both ways. It doesn't necessarily mean they can work better with a younger woman. It doesn't necessarily mean that they can better work with a career-oriented woman. But it has to go through everything. It's a holistic approach of it. So um, it really depends on whose stars will align on that night. As we all know, hard work, determination. But at the end of the day, um, whose stars the universe will align. And sana ikaw yun. Sana. Sana this time. <laughs> yeah. 
Pero I'm curious to ask, from a perspective of a 30-year-old woman, how do you feel about this kind of double standard imposed on women like you? Um, it's not new to me naman, having a double standard, uh, having to live in that kind of society. Um, I have a very conservative family. Mm-hmm. Hindi naman super conservative, but um, my mom and her siblings are conservative in a way na parang when I was younger, even after Bini Bini, they're like, oh, when are you gonna get married? When are you gonna mm-hmm. get pregnant? Oh, your cousin already, she's engaged. Ikaw, kailan? Mm-hmm. And I was like, um, I also do have, you know, views for myself. Um, and then eventually they did give up on that idea. They realized na I'm different. And I think the difference, uh, that should be parang a signal na din na it's okay to speak up. It's okay to be different. And it's beautiful that you're different. Um, because we live in a conservative family, it's how you say it and how you let them understand. But I'm very lucky that my family is so understanding. And now they're very supportive also. Hmm. Um, it's it's a, a very big plus and a savior for uh, what I'm going through and what I chose <laughs> for myself this time. I'm curious to ask, I'll make this light muna. Paano mo sila, niba sabi mo, mm-hmm. gumivap na rin yung mga titas mo, yes. yung mga relatives mo in asking that question to you? Para how were you able to convince them to stop asking you that, you know, nagging question? I think it was how I lived my life and they saw that I didn't really need to at that moment. They saw I was doing well with work, they saw I was doing well with myself. So, parang nakita naman nila na parang oo nga no, iba din yung priorities ni Chris. Mm-hmm. So, parang I think eventually it came they came to an understanding na parang iba yung priorities ko but i'm happy with the, the 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 things that i chose for myself let's talk about those priorities mm-hmm. that you chose for yourself what has been the th- what have been those things that you did in the 10 years that you were mm-hmm. away from the pageant scene nga you said kanina you've been traveling nakita ko yung instagram account mo parang feeling ko nalibot mo na yung buong mundo not yet not even not half yet, yet. <laughs> <laughs> at least half lang but um kasi my dad passed away when i was 20 oh and then so it was only me my mom and my brother and when my brother and I were doing well financially, what we were doing better financially, it was instilled kasi in our hearts na um, we travel as a family. Kasi lagi kaming nagta-travel as a family. My dad used to work for an airline company, so we had the, the benefit na we, we can travel at a good rate. And for me kasi, lagi akong tinatanong, ano ba ang gastos mo? When are you gonna stop traveling? When are you gonna stop... Um, uh, when are you gonna start saving? Ganyan. Yeah, no. But for me, kasi, I kind of felt like traveling makes my relationship with my dad stronger. Um, he gave me that, uh, that benefit kasi, to travel and enjoy the world. Because I had that view in life, it made me see the world in a bigger spectrum. It made me appreciate the beauty of the world, or the universe rather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it also made me realize that every time I travel, the beautiful things I get to leave at home and the beautiful things I can come back to. So I always travel because I always feel like it strengthens my bond with my dad. When you travel, do you travel alone or you, or you always go with, uh, go with your friends? It depends, but my my recent travel buddy has been my mom. Oh, so lagi kong perfect kasama yung na. mom ko, kasi she doesn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> but uh oh, it's it's my mom, kasi um, I also want her to experience the things that I'm experiencing now. Kasi she got married at 27 and she had me at 28. Looking back at the years I've had and the places I've been to, considering how old she is and what she did when she was in my age, parang sabi ko, she needs to experience the beautiful things that I'm experiencing now while I can. And while she can also. Mm-hmm. 
And then um, on other times, mas, mas gusto ko din to travel alone. I can really. Right? Mm-hmm. Kasi parang you don't have to wait for anyone. Yes, you can do whatever. Mo yung oras exactly. Mo. Tapos oh. if if things go wrong, you have no one else to blame but yourself, oh, oh, <laughs> diba? oh, 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 oh. So the the recent travel I did solo trip was in Europe. Uh oh. oh. And it was so fun. It's so expensive. Very fun. <laughs> uh, you need to break a bank <laughs> yeah. in order to go there. Uh oh. Pero I wonder the downside. Who's taking your pictures? Ah, I can show you videos of how I did it. But yeah, I did. Ah, no. Um, I started in Malta. I met up with my cousin in Malta. She moved to Malta, kasi. Mm-hmm. So from Malta, we flew together to Rome. Wow. So we spent five days in Rome, and then when they left Rome, I traveled now to Florence. I met with the Filipino um, resident in in Florence. And then I was in Milan alone, but then I flew to um, Athens after. And I met another Filipino in Athens. So that's how like, oh, can you take my photo? And sometimes I see tourists, oh, do you want me to take your photo? And then I would take their photo. Oh, can you take my photo also? <laughs> that's a trick. Ako ganyan ako, pero paano ko yung nakawa, yung, 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 kap, paano yung nasabihan mong kapwa turista mo, hindi para marunong sa mga angle-angle Ay, niya, especially oh. to get that Instagram-worthy oh, oh. photos, right? Oh, oh. But um, one funny thing I did in Milan was I would put my phone, lean it on some wall or something, or set it up myself and then take a video of it. If there's a nice angle, I'll take a screenshot of it na lang. Pero alam mo, I really have to agree with you. There's something about traveling mm-hmm. alone that make that makes it so therapeutic. Yes, yes. Yeah, apart from, you know, easy on logistics, pero yung iba yung mas na discover mo yung sarili mo. Mm-hmm. Diba? Kunyari, ako pa naman, may pagkaburara ako. <laughs> Kung saan-saan ko nalalagay yung gamit ko. Yeah. Pero, I always end up, you know, still g- oh, getting I, I it. I have a lot of funny stories with my Uh-oh. recent European trip. But one thing about it is, it makes you realize how small you actually are. It makes you realize that there's so many beautiful things in the world that you can mm-hmm. learn from. And it opens your, your mind. It makes you... Parang open-minded, it mm. makes you understand why things go the way they do. And it makes you understand why it doesn't always go the way you want it to. I have to agree. So why do I have this feeling that because of your, that your love for traveling has something to do with your present job right now? Mm. It, it does, somehow. Because uh, you're now working... For the office of the mayor, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I work as a protocol officer. So um, what we do is uh, we do handle his schedules, mga appointments. Mm-hmm. And I fly very often here in Manila because when he does have meetings and we ha- when he has mga um, other events to attend to, mm-hmm. there has to be a protocol officer. Yung ano ka, parang... You have to be there before he does. You have to oh, understand oh, oh, where yeah, he sits, yeah. who he sits with. So in terms of logistics, yes. you're the one handling it. Mm-mm. So wait, which mayor are you working for? For the city of Cebu, Mayor Michael Rama. <laughs> oh, the the relative of Miss Annabelle, Annabelle Rama. Rama. Oh. Yes. So pag may mga ano din sila, family occasions, he flies here, oh, attends oh. the birthdays, mga meetings, ganyan. So. So, how has been your work so far there? So, ngayon, I assume naka-leave ka. Official leave. Sabi ko, walang tatawag sa akin. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, paano yun? Wait, di ba nag-courtesy call ka sa kanya? Yes, yes. Oh, oh it was so, parang... so funny. I think um, they did post photos of our courtesy call. Tapos nakita doon na nakatawa ako. I, I was jokingly saying na parang I was on duty, kunyari. Tapos parang, Mayor, your next guest is here. Tapos ako din pala yung papasok. <laughs> so, natatawa naman siya. He's very supportive and the whole city naman is very supportive. I'm appointed as uh, the representative for Cebu. So, buti na lang din, I do have relatives from different parts of the island of Cebu naman. They're all so supportive. And I think that's one beauty and one power of having to represent Cebu. Everything, everything and everyone just comes together to help. Oh, nakita ko yun sa <laughs> how they united with your fellow friends. Yes. Oh, when they were the title, the where when they were competing, or even the title holders in their respective pageants in a gazini. Yes. So you know, speaking of them, so how 
have they have you sought advice from them regarding mm-hmm. your foray in Miss Universe Philippines? Considering Cebu has been killing it, ah, mm-hmm. in Pressure. MUP, ah, Pressure. to be specific. <laughs> but the, yes, um, I'm so, when I did post that uh, message on my Instagram, a lot of the queens really did reach out to me. And I'm not quite sure if it was Gazzini or it was Steffi, but it was one of the Cebuana queens sent me a message saying, Ate, you inspire me so much because I really cannot imagine myself joining and going through the whole roller coaster of the pageantry again. Sabi ko, parang, oo nga, no? what did I do to myself? But uh-huh. <laughs> receiving messages like this really inspire me even more because it makes me realize that I'm not here just for me, but I'm here for a bigger purpose. And that is to show to them that even a 34-year-old woman can be on stage and still compete. What do you think a 34-year-old woman can do that your younger contemporaries wouldn't be able to do? It definitely is the maturity that I got over time because of the experiences I have been through in life. It's being able to immediately understand and process the whole situation when things come Mm -hmm. uh, and then things come suddenly maybe when i was younger when i when i would be in my 20s i would react instantly because of that energy of a younger um, younger woman i guess but it's being more calm and more understanding of the whole situation and everybody else also so is that probably how how you are attacking your game plan or strategy for Miss Universe. Mas medyo, yung pagiging, kalma, yung pagiging mature mo, confidence mo, pwede ka bang ma-equate sa pagiging kalmado mo? I guess so. I guess so. Kasi, um, one thing also with having experience in the pageantry also is, you know already where to put your energy Mm-hmm. And you know what to expect already. I mean, it doesn't always go the way you expect it. Iba iba naman talaga. Mm-hmm. Pero you have an initial idea of how things go and how things will go. So the reason I asked that question, my previous question is, you know, if I relate it to your Miss, uh, to Miss Cebu journey recently, talagang dinaan mo lang talaga kami <laughs> sa ganda na mukha mo. Talagang face card, laging face card, face card never declines. Talagang <laughs> nadadaan mo talaga kami dun. So, you know, given that you're blessed with a, with a beautiful face, you know, do you think having that kind of, have that, do you think possessing that kind of face can get you far in life? Power comes with great responsibility. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I think um, it has to be the whole personality also that gets you far. A good friend of mine, si Carla Henry, yeah. we always tell the girls na parang, you know, we're in the industry and it's been a while since, kasi it's been 10 years, but Carla and I still do hosting, we still do events. Yes. Um, we get invited in some events. We get invited to speak also in events. But lagi namin sinasabi, we did not rely on our titles. We did not rely on... Um, the physical attribute when we won at that time, but it was really on the respect we gave to everyone that became a long-lasting memory of people. That's why they still remember us up until now. It was us giving such great respect not only to the people of higher rank, but to everybody mm-hmm. who, who we have come across with and who we have worked with. It's really about the attitude and the heart of being grateful to people. Mm-hmm. As I realize it now, all these things coming your way, you know, um, hindi mo inasahan yung pagbabalik mo. And now you seem to be enjoying it, you know, with every, with every particular activity that I'm, you know, I'm mm-hmm. blessed to be, to be attending. And, you know, as I went down my interview with you, as early as now, kanino ka super grateful for everything that has been happening to you lately? Um, I, I'm so grateful to 
lagi kong sinasabi na, I'm not the most religious person in the world, but I believe in God. I believe that He takes care of us and He, mm. you know, he, he sees the goodness in our hearts also. I'm very grateful kasi minsan, lagi kong, I would wake up one day and I said, Lord, parang umaapaw na yung favoritism mo sa akin. Ha? Parang mm-hmm. I see a little too much of your love for me. Kasi the little prayers that I do um, tell him at night, I see his answers. And that I am able to understand that, you know, there are things you want in life, but you don't get it because he gives you what you need, not what you want. I'm grateful because he gave me the family I have now. I cannot complain. My mom is my friend me, but I cannot complain. She's the best I can ever have. My best friends, my support. I cannot complain with the people who are around me. They are the many reasons why I do the things I do and I work hard because what I want is just to give back, give back the love that they have for me, give back the energy and the support that they have given and they have sacrificed so much for me. I thank God for Mommy Jonas, who has come into my life, who has given me so much, and I cannot complain. Because of Mommy Jonas, I have kept in my heart the, the little thing, yung pay it forward. Dati si, ano, si Mommy Jonas, pag nalaman niya nasa Cebu ako, dahi anong ginagawa mo? Mommy, nasa bahay ako. Um, dahi okay lang ba? May papatulong. Mommy, nasa taxi na ko, I'm on the way. Kasi after Binibining Pilipinas, never ask for anything, but only ask me if I could at least assist or help the girls he's helping. Si Mami Jonas was a blessing, an angel. And I want people to have that also. It was one of the greatest stories in my life. And it's such a blessing na gusto ko ding i-share sa mga tao. And I think it's, it's an opportunity for me na, you know, to be here and tell people to pay it forward kasi it just goes around. Your goodness, your kindness will come back to you. And I have this view in life because of the beautiful gifts and the beautiful blessings that God has given me. What do you think is, is He saying to you right now from above? I, I hope He's proud of me, that He sees uh, my hard work and my heart. I... I'm not perfect, but I try to be good to people and I try as much as possible to share the kindness and the goodness that I have experienced because of it. So true. As my last question, you know, we're talking about ageism and mm-hmm. how important is it for someone like you to be a true representation of what, a- what ageism is all about in pageantry. Five years from now, six years from now, You'll be turning 40 years old. What do you think your 40-year-old self will tell you right now? I am proud of you for taking that step. I am proud of you for stepping up and deciding to show up on behalf or for the women out there who were told that they should live a certain way because society tells them to or the little girls who are afraid to speak up because they were told that they're young and they can't do anything because of their age. I'm proud of you because um, you represent the strength that the women needed. And I'm proud of you because you took a stand and you are you. And for sure, your entire Cebuanos are truly proud of you of what you are doing right now. So there you go. Maraming, maraming Thank salamat so for much. this scintillating interview with you. You know, it has been, you know, it's more like a catch-up interview with you. Ten years and, you know, when, when you were, when you were, uh, when you were the reigning queen back then, I was still a normal pageant fan. But now I, I'm so blessed to be able to have this platform to share with you so that you can, you know, make more impact your grow, growing fan base. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adam. So we've grown so much over the 10 mm. years. Daghang salamat for, uh, for this interview, for taking the time also. 
and we learned so much about you, you. for the past 20 minutes. So <laughs> there you go, guys. I hope you had a great time catching up with my beautiful guest here. Could she be the next Miss Universe Philippines? Well, we still have to find it out in two months' time. But for now, thank you so, so much again. And Miss Chris, until my next interview, bye!